Early this morning while I was drinking my coffee trying to wake up, I read the book of Ephesians. And as I read about the four postures the Apostle Paul mentions, I had to wonder if the Apostle was reflecting on Psalm 1. Uh, there are three postures in Psalm 1. And the description in verse 1 is that the righteous person is not one who walks according to the wicked and stands where the sinners stand and sits in the seat of scoffers. So there's this walking, standing, sitting. It's not the exact same thing, but a lot of overlap with what the Apostle says in the book of Ephesians. And of course, that Psalm 1 verse 1 is contrasted with verse 2, which is the person who roots himself in the Word of God and not uh, uh, walking and standing and sitting with the ungodly, but everything is about the Word of God and all ideas are rooted there and filtered through the Word. So what does the Apostle Paul say? Was he reflecting on Psalm 1? I don't know, perhaps, but here's how he says it. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, is the first posture that the Apostle Paul mentions. It says this, speaking of by grace we've been saved, then he says, and raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is something God did. We're seated in the heavenly. Remember, Psalm had this sitting in the place of scoffers. Now we sit in the heavenly places in Christ. The starting point of the postures that the apostle mentions starts with something God did. He seated us in Christ in the heavenly places. That's a complicated uh, uh, idea to wrap our heads around, but that is the start point. Something God does for us, not something we do for Him. Our response is in chapter 3. And here in verse 14, after describing this whole thing in the chapter 2, the beginning of chapter 3, this what does it mean to be seated in the heavenly places while we live here on earth? Then the response is in verse 14 of chapter 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father. We're seated in the heavenly places. Posture number two is our response, which is to bow the knee. God did something for us in Christ. We respond to what He did in humility. We respond by acknowledging His Lordship. We respond by bowing the knees. We're seated in the heavenlies. We respond on earth in humility, bowing, acknowledging God as our Lord, as our ultimate um, ruler and the final authority for all of our lives. All that is part of bowing the knee. So we've got chapter 2, sit. Chapter 3, bow. And then chapter 4 and 5, Paul takes two whole chapters to talk about our third posture. And it begins in verse 1. Therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling. Okay, we've got sit, bow, walk. And the rest of this chapter and most of chapter 5 is describing how to walk and how not to walk. And so we walk worthy of the calling in verse 1. Verse 17, he says, now don't walk like the Gentiles. There's a, there, there's a negative to it now. Here's how you walk worthy of the calling. And all that is described in the beginning of, of, of chapter 4. But then he says, now listen, here's how we're not supposed to live. There's always a limitation, a negative of this is out of bounds. And, and he describes all of that. And then in chapter 5, again, another unfortunate chapter break because it's still about the walk in chapter 5. And he says that we're to walk in love in verse 2. In verse 15, he talks about we're supposed to walk in wisdom. And so most of the walk talk is descriptive of what we should do. Walk worthy of the call, walk in truth, walk in wisdom, but not in this way. And that's when he frames that. And so that leads, so we sit, bow, walk. Sit is what God does for us. Bow is what we do in response. Walk is what we do once we've bowed. And then it leads to this in chapter 6, verse 11. And all of chapter 6 is about this fourth posture, which is stand. Unfortunately, this doesn't lead to this sitting, this place of comfort. It starts there, but then it progressively gets more intense. And what does it say in verse 11? Finally, verse 10, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. There's an assumption from the apostle, like there was in the words of Jesus, that there is a real devil, a real Satan, and spiritual warfare is real. 
that there is something outside of our physical world and what he builds this posture toward is standing, taking a stand against evil, against the demonic, against these spiritual forces. Then in verse verse 13, uh, he goes on and says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all, stand firm. So you stand against, you stand firm. In verse 14, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth. And he, he goes and explains that we're standing in truth. But my point is this, this ends with the standing. And as you read this end of chapter 6, it's a war. It's a battle. It's a fight. There's several types of fighting mentioned. There's wrestling, which is this one-on-one combat with all of these um, skills and moves, there's wrestling. There's also warfare imagery where the idea is if you think about a Roman centurion and you think about the armor and the group of seven that they fought with. And, 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 but the point is this, not to get into the details of the difference in wrestling and Roman centurion combat, but the point is this, it's a fight. The Christian life starts with seated in the heavenlies. That's our security. That's where we're comfortable. That's where we're relaxed. It starts with something God did. But it quickly moves from what God did to our response, which first of all is to bow our knees. Before we ever walk, before we ever fight and win in spiritual warfare, we bow our knees first. We bow in humility. We bow in submission. We bow in recognition that Jesus is Lord. And so we bow, then we learn to walk with Him and how not to walk, but ultimately it ends in a fight. I know this is not really great news for a lot of people, but we're in a war, spiritual war. We're not fighting against people and policies and and this kind of thing. It's a spiritual warfare that goes on. We're called to stand and fight. We don't fight laying down. We don't fight sitting down. We don't fight in all these other postures. It's a stand. And I want to encourage you as you make disciples, teach them how to stand. Teach them how to fight. As you develop leaders, teach them how to stand. Teach them when to stand. Teach them and model where to take a stand. It starts in the heavenlies, seated with Christ, and it ends with this spiritual warfare from earth with us taking a stand.